Welcome back to Questing Beast. I'm Ben. Today we're going to be taking a look at this review copy that I was sent of Epocrypha, a book of speculative ages by Skirples. Skirples is the author of the Coins and Scrolls blog and also the author of uh, Tomb of the Serpent Kings, which I've reviewed previously and is one of my favorite beginning dungeons to use for new players. Uh, before we get uh, into this review, a quick shout out to Arcanist Dragon, Tiago Rolam, Ian Noble, Timothy Desheen, Randolph, and Libra Liter for becoming patrons over on Patreon. Uh, these fine people, along with all other $2 and plus uh, pledges, will be getting monthly updates to my uh, new edition of Maze Rats entitled Maze Knights. So if you're interested in following along with the development of that game, you can head over to the Patreon link in the description below. So what this book is, is it's just a D100 table. And every single entry is a possible epoch of the world that you live in, uh, whatever fantasy world that might be. Each of them is increasingly weird, strange, and often hilarious. So this is very much just a supplement that you would use to add onto whatever world you're using to give it more depth. Here's our back cover. We have a little motto on the front, Sic Transit Gloria Mundorum, or Thus Passes the Glory of the Worlds. I love the design of this table of contents or these, uh, the authors, it feels very much like an old, you know, like 1700s book and it's all written in character. So it feels like it's written by some, uh, historian from the 1700s or something like that. It's very funny. The art is also very good. Uh, it's all done by Logan Stahl, who I don't think I've seen art from before, but I like it quite a bit. It reminds me a bit of Luca Reyes. And that has this very clean black and white line art style. And I think it's very effective. So thanks to my esteemed colleagues and my hated rivals. Again, really well written. Uh, Scribbles is a really funny writer. And a brief introduction on the idea of deep time. Because these each of these epochs can cover you know thousands or millions of years at a time. Deep time travel and how to use this book. So yeah, the main question is what would you, exactly would you use this book for? Um, in my mind, there's a couple main areas where it would be useful. One, if you're doing time travel, if you're traveling to different um, eras and different planes of existence, this could be used for inspiration to quickly throw weird uh, places and settings at players. Another great option would be if the player's home setting is being invaded by another time period you have some sort of time war thing going on. And thirdly, this would work really well with veins of the earth or really any other underdark setting that um, where you're traveling down through the strata of the earth. Because the deeper you go, each of these epochs is probably going to leave evidence behind. So if you're going deeper and deeper into maybe a mega dungeon or the underdark, you could use each of these epochs to flavor that layer of the dungeon. I think that would be a really interesting way to add uh, a lot more weirdness and interest to underground adventures. But there's some other um, ideas here as well. All right, so D100 time periods. Uh, they're in no particular order, really. So what we're going to do is we're just going to roll up some time periods and see what we get. So you get a sense of what you'll be getting out of this little book. So first one is number nine. Let's go to number nine. Ah, the cephalopod crisis. Listed in some texts as the tentacular spectacular, cone-shelled ammonite uh, develop water jet propulsion, accelerate to ludicrous speeds, ocean currents permanently altered by racing groups and associated spectators. Nautiloids develop a taste for brains. The first suborbital cephalopods, Acceleratus stellare, accidentally collide with, a, with precariously balanced giant sulfurous ferns accidentally acidifying the oceans and killing off most of the hard-shelled cephalopods. Oceanic bookies retreat to deep-sea vents to avoid creditor fish. Let's try another one. We have number 20. The Great Realignment. Oh, this is a good one. The stable law chaos matrix is thrown into disarray after a close encounter with another plane leaves a residue of subatomic moralitons smeared across the universe. Thousands of competing ethical gradients emerge and fight for dominance through imprinting upon biological life. 
Law of Chaos Matrix eventually reasserts dominance after the good evil matrix collapses into civil war. What's funny about this is it reminded me a bit of how in early D&D everything was Law of Chaos and then eventually the good evil alignment was added on top of that. So that's kind of an explanation for why that might have happened. This is also a good one. The Bird Age. Everything was birds. Trees, tall birds. Viruses, small birds. Rocks, heavy birds. People were pretty happy to see the end of this one. Let's look at a couple more. What do we have? 47. What do we have for 47? The Audit Boundary. Celestial creditors arrive to inspect early bacteria. Rapid growth and biochemical evolution creates extra paperwork. Auditors call for backup. Paperwork stored on land, currently unoccupied. Discovery of arche archaea bacteria causes auditors to throw up hands in despair and depart, leaving three and a half continents covered in file cabinets. Paper-eating bacteria rapidly dominate bi biosphere, poison the atmosphere, and die. Coal from this period is very high quality, but contains staples and paper clips. So again, this would be a great layer to put in the dungeon. If you're going deep enough into the earth, you come across the outit boundary. And for some reason, there's staples and paper clips embedded in the rocks, which have a high degree of nice quality coal. And so you, if you have a player that, or a character that has a lot of background in history, maybe they can talk about, or they would know what era or epoch this uh, layer of the dungeon comes from. Let's just do a couple more. How about 19? I think we already did, we already looked at page 19. Uh, 39. 39. The Great Cancellation. After several hundred million years of diminishing viewership figures, planetary history is finally brought to an end by mid level marketing executives who argue that it's no longer in tune with current trends. Evolution is placed on hiatus, and its slot filled in by an unremarkable sitcom about a suburban single dad with too many kids. Time travelers to this period complain about the hackneyed storylines and the omnipresence of canned laughter. And of course, the very next one is the dark, gritty reboot of Evolution, which everyone hates and which is abruptly canceled. So that's a sense of what you're going to get here. It's everything from a fairly plausible epoch of history, albeit with some fantasy twists, all the way up to deeply absurd, weird, and almost nonsensical eras that have been wiped from the historical record. So it, it, this was a really fun book to read. It is also one of the funniest OSR books that I've read in a really long time. It is a short little book, but if you plan to do a lot of deep diving dungeon adventures, underdark adventures, or time travel stuff, this is a great little supplement to add to whatever campaign that you're running. It would also be a really fun book to give as a gift, frankly. If you have a friend that's really into D&D and isn't aware of the wacky stuff going on in the OSR, giving them a book like this, which is just a piece of world building, really, is a great way to introduce them to the kinds of stuff happening in the old school scene. Um, there are no stats or numbers in this book at all. It's really just uh, a collection of world building ideas. It's entirely system neutral. So you could use this even if you weren't running an OSR type game at all. So that's it for my review of Epocrypha. Definitely a fun little book. Highly recommend that you check it out. I'll put links down in the description below for where you can get it for yourself if you're so inclined. And thank you for watching. Remember to like and subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already. And I'll see you guys next time.